So thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Addison, one of our developer advocates at Miro. Um, today, we're going to be diving into some of the utilities that we offer from the Miro developer platform that will help um, yeah, that'll help you understand a little bit more on how you can bootstrap uh, an app and how you can get one up and running specifically focused with the uh, Miro Web SDK. Um, we can take a look at some of the app settings that you might use um, as well with the REST API and some other uh, options such as Live Embed. But I think today's focus is merely going to be on, um, okay, we have an app idea. What is the best way to go ahead and get this started? So the first thing, uh, before we go ahead and actually create an app and uh, get started with one, we do need to do a few things. Uh, and the first thing is going to be um, creating a developer uh, developer team. You obviously will also need a Miro team in order to do this. Uh, but in order to create a development team, uh, whenever you do this, it allows you to test and build apps that you can go then submit to the marketplace or share with, with others privately or publicly. Um, the easiest way to do it is right from our developer documentation. So if you are on our developer documentation, developers.miro.com, we can head to the web SDK documentation. We have a section here that says build your first Hello World app. And scrolling down just a little bit, you'll see this section here that says create a developer team in Miro. Um, there's a link here that will do it uh, as well. Um, I've already done this, so I don't need to go ahead and click on the link. But after you do so, you'll end up with a new team in the upper left-hand corner from your Miro dashboard that's obviously named development. Um, and a few things about this team specifically, it's limited to a maximum of three boards. You'll notice that I went ahead and created a, another board, but it went to view only. Um, so that's just a small limitation. But again, the apps that you create here, you can install into other teams. Um, so merely the development team is used for uh, development purposes. I have a, uh, a board called Sandbox that I do most of my testing and development in. We're going to go into this one in just a minute. But I want to point out one extra thing from the development team as well, which is this blue button up in the upper right that says Build Apps. If you're in another team that isn't a developer team, you won't have this option here. And this is where we're going to be able to access all of, our, uh, all of the settings for whatever app that we're going to be building. Now. We have a developer team. We want to start building an app. So let's go ahead and click uh, click into this button. I have a bunch of different uh, apps already created. Um, but for the purposes of this one, we're going to go ahead and create a new app. So we'll have to you'll have to read our terms of use, terms of service, and privacy policy. Um, and I'll go ahead and create a new app. Um, I'm going to name this one uh, developer QA. It'll ask what team you want to install this in. But as you see, I'm a part of different teams, but I only have the option to install it into my development app at the start. You also will have an option to expire your user authorization token. This is specific for our REST API. And if you are interested in planning on using the REST API, I would highly recommend doing this. So you'll make use of refresh tokens so you can uh, limit and have a little bit more secure access for your users. Uh, I'm going to leave this blank. We're not going to be using the REST API in this uh, demo today um, because I just want to talk a little bit more about the SDK specific uh, specific settings. So we went ahead and created a uh, an app. Let's go through some of the settings that we have here. So we have the option for the web SDK version. Chances are you probably won't see this. This is a deprecated version of our SDK now that we're on V2. Um, I have this just for some testing purposes. The app credentials, so your client ID and your client secret. If you do want to interact with the Miro REST API, you will need these. So these are a little bit more um, specific to the REST API. We do have the app URL, which is going to be specific for the web SDK. We're going to come back to this, but this is the URL that points to wherever your uh, app is hosted at. We're going to be developing locally, so you'll see we can use localhost here. But if you do host it somewhere else uh, on you know, self-hosted or another hosting solution, you'll want to make sure that you update this URL to wherever that is afterwards. So then you're using your production version versus a local development one. Redirect URI for uh, OAuth2 if you are also using the REST API. Again, this relates to the REST, uh, excuse me, the refresh token and the access token. Um, something of note as well is if you haven't selected the option for expiring the user auth authorization token in the beginning, you aren't able to uh, do this afterwards. So you will have to enable that setting when you first create an app uh, in, in the app creation flow. 
permissions, these are also uh, specific to the, um, well, both the REST API and the web SDK. Um, we want to give our SDK that we're going to be testing today access to our board. We want to read the contents of the board and we want to also write to the board. I'm going to go into this a little bit more in depth in just a second, but you'll see that there's a couple other options here as well. If we want to be able for our application to read information about our team, write to it, such as remove members, uh, edit members, etc., and even some more um, advanced ones, which I think we'll probably cover in a later session. If you want to tap into your browser and your computer's microphone, the screen or webcam, you can do some really, really cool stuff with uh, with the web SDK. And then some also enterprise specific uh, scopes as well. After you choose the scopes and permissions that you want to use for your app, you'll also need to install the app, uh, app not only create it. This is gonna be your initial uh, installation and authorization flow for any app. I'm going to be doing this all inside of my development team, so I'm going to choose this one here. It'll give you a confirmation on the different permissions that you've set, and we're going to click install and authorize. We do get an access token here, which is specific again to the uh, REST API. We're not going to be using that today, so we can ignore that for now. So if we go back to our boards and we head into, say, like a sandbox here, we should see that this has been installed. I'm gonna head over to our plugins. And actually it might not show up because it's not running, uh, but we'll find the app that we want to use inside of here once once it is running. Okay, so we have uh, an app created in Miro, but not uh, any code running behind it. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do next. And the fastest way to bootstrap and get started with uh, a new Miro app is by using our command line interface tool called Create Miro App. This is an interactive terminal prompt that lets you choose different languages and different uh, frameworks that you can build your app in. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this looks like. The fastest way to do this is by running npx create Miro app. And I have this running here and I have a uh, directory that I want to paste this in. So I'm just gonna run npx create Miro app, hit enter. And it's gonna ask me for a few different things. So I'm gonna name this developer QA as the application name. I'll ask us what framework we want to do. Uh, I'm big into React and a React developer, so I'm going to choose React, but you are able to develop this in native and plain vanilla JavaScript, HTML, CSS, etc., and even Vue if you'd like. And even after you go into the React um, or even just JavaScript vanilla, uh, you can choose between TypeScript and JavaScript. And I also like TypeScript, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I choose this flavor here. This will give it a second. Uh, it'll install the dependencies and everything it needs uh, into a new directory. So let's just give this a minute. And after we do this, what I want to do is go ahead and change my directory inside of here. And I'm going to open this in a, in a text editor. So use Visual Studio Code, you can use whatever you'd like. Let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see this as well. So now that we have our, um, our project bootstrapped, we can explore it a little bit. We have the source, uh, any assets that we have here, the styles that we use in the CSS, the main app for our, let me zoom out, the main app for our, uh, our UI, which we'll see what, what this is doing in just a sec, and some other files that it's using um, package JSON, so if you want to install any other dependencies and use other frameworks, you can very easily do so, and some other configuration files here. Now, what I'm going to do very quickly is install the dependencies that I need into this project. So I'm using Yarn. I'm just going to run this quick. And if we open up package JSON, you'll notice that the script that we can use to run this is just yarn start. Um, and this is going to be running with a utility called vit. Um, you can find more information about this in our documentation or on the vit.js uh, website as well. But now that we have this bootstrapped, I can very easily run yarn start. And you'll see that this is now running on a network localhost. 3000. If we go to that in a browser, 
we should be able to see some information that the app is running locally, but we still need to point that to the app that we have configured inside of Miro. So I'm gonna head back to the build apps section here, find the app that I have made down here, and we can paste that inside of the app URL. So I can go ahead and just do just like that. You can reinstall it if you want. Sometimes if you are running into some issues, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and reinstall your app inside of whatever team that you're working with. So go back to the board, the sandbox one, head over to plugins, and you'll see we have a new app called Developer Q&A. And if I open it, you'll see the UI for the bootstrapped application that we have. And it also uses one of the AP, uh, the SDK calls right off the bat. So let's explore that real quick and see what happens. There's two main files within the React starter that you're gonna to want to focus with, focus on. And the first one is in index.ts, which is uh, defining and calling this function called init. It taps into the board UI part of the SDK. That mentions, well, whenever we click on this icon, make sure you open the panel from app.html. That's this one here. This is served uh, to the, the SDK panel, so this section right here. But since we're using React, it's actually then going back and pointing to the app.tsx. So that's where this UI is being served. So if I say read the docs and I save that, you'll see that this is updated right off the bat. Now you'll also notice that every time I open this application, it adds a sticky note to, to the board. And that's because whenever this app loads, it's using part of React called use effect, which is called whenever the, uh, the UI or this, this component is mounted. It's calling this function called add sticky, which as you see, creates a sticky note and it zooms to it. For the sake of this, I'm going to actually go ahead and just remove this function just because we don't need to, or we don't necessarily want to add a sticky note every time we open up the, the board. We wanna focus on just kind of some of the UI um, and some of the other SDK calls. So again, we have all the UI here, the image, we have some text, a button that we can play with, but what I'm focus on right now is a little bit more about the what we're using to style and, and insert some of these components. And these are being served by something called Miro Tone. Now Miro Tone is our official um, uh, component library for developing SDK apps in Miro. Highly recommend you to use it. Um, it follows a lot of the guidelines and styles that we use even in our own apps as well. And we have a ton of components already made, but not only the components, but we have things like templates, foundational components, and even just concepts like layout, spacing, uh, and even icons, which make it, makes it really, really helpful for you to uh, even, again, build very beautiful apps very quickly without having to think too much about styling them. And if you click into, him, into here, you'll see they're all interactive. You can copy and paste these into your, uh, your UI as well. Um, so for instance, if we want to have maybe like a table, we can copy and paste all of this inside of here. And this is like a pretty big, uh, pretty big code snippet that we can see going on here, but even something more simple like a, uh, like a toggle. Now if we go back and we just go ahead and remove some of this, this also needs to be, because we're using React, oh, actually, Be like this. If we go to here again, we have the toggle on and off. So definitely make sure you use Mirotone if you're looking for a library that allows you to style and uh, create uh, create things very fast.